everyone, I'm Jo and this is Nix and this is Nellie. Nix and Nellie and I were recently lucky enough to catch up with Professor Mark Cook who's an epilepsy researcher and a neurologist at St Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne. Now Professor Cook was about to jump on a plane to attend a big meeting of epilepsy researchers from around the world but before he did he took time out to talk to us about what drives him in his work, what have been the most significant recent advances in epilepsy treatment and what's going on in the world of epilepsy research. Take a look. Pleasure to be here, Jay. Well, epilepsy is such a common disease and it has so many different causes. And I guess uh, something that attracted me initially was that it was an area that a lot of neurologists and doctors more generally didn't seem very confident in dealing with. And as well, I was interested to see whether we could offer new treatments to people with epilepsy. I guess over the last 10 years, there have been a lot of new medications mm. and they've, they've made a big difference. As well though, there have been developments such as brain stimulating devices, which are still in probably fairly early stages of development, but in the last 10 years, very sophisticated devices that can sense seizures and provide electrical stimulation to stop them and become available. Mm -hmm. And although we don't have them in Australia yet, they are an area that's expanding pretty rapidly. So we've developed a system that will allow seizures to be counted. It's an implant that goes under the skin of the scalp mm -hmm. and then it broadcasts information out to the world and tells you whether seizures are happening and it'll tell people where you are and if you've stopped moving or if something's gone wrong. So the aim is to give people back more independence, particularly younger people, mm -hmm. and as well to let us give their treatment more accurately. But just by counting seizures and keeping a close record of them, we can build on that and make these very uh, sophisticated prediction systems that will let you figure out if it's a safe day for you or not or maybe if there's going to be a seizure in the hours ahead and that will change life quite a bit I think for people with epilepsy. Well I think if we can do that, if we know when seizures are going to happen maybe we can give treatment just at those times. Mm. At the moment all of the treatments are based around giving a medication all of, all of the time to stop something because you don't know when it's going to happen yeah. so you have to give the treatment all the time. But if we knew when it was going to happen, then maybe we, and we could do that reliably, then maybe we just need to give treatment then, and I think that would be pretty good. The only problem is at the moment we don't have many treatments that work short term like that. There are some, right. but they're an area which will need to be built on. Mm -hmm. But again, the stimulation systems might be uh, useful in that regard, and, and we've been involved in other research with uh, delivery systems that put drugs directly into the brain, and it's possible right. these systems let us do things like this as well. It's an implant, yes, yep. and it pumps drug directly into the fluid that surrounds the brain mm -hmm. to try and provide seizure control this way. And these are fairly uh, early research studies at the moment, but they're looking pretty promising. And as possible, we could use those sorts of technologies to give drugs just when needed. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing about other device technologies, of course, mm -hmm. but I'm interested as well to see what developments have occurred in the medical marijuana field because yep. that's a very topical interest at the moment and um, I guess, you know, there's a lot of work going on and these sort of meetings are a good place to catch up on what's happening mm -hmm. at ground level and also meet people who are prescribing these agents a bit more yep. uh, widely, so that'll be a very important part of the meeting. just need a bit more work done research wise to figure yeah. out which sorts of epilepsies it's good for, mm -hmm. uh, how much you need to give, what the other side effects are and so on in the, in the long term and I, I don't think we know any of that yet. I mean yeah. we see in the media examples of people who've done very well and that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Does it work as well for everyone? Will it work as well over a long period? Does it mm -hmm. need to be changed? I, I don't think we know the answers to all this. Yeah. steps have been taken to legalise it, it's still very expensive through the companies mm. that have made it available, some are only available through research projects, so yep. uh, it's really complicated at yeah. the moment. And unfortunately a lot of patients who are really hanging their hopes on getting hold of the medical marijuana and it's just not worked out largely through a lot yeah. of administrative problems. My, my key message would be that there's a lot happening now, it's a really exciting time mm. and you know, for the first time, we're seeing really dramatic new changes in the management of epilepsy. So we're understanding it better through these recording systems, for instance, but through brain stimulation, we're figuring out how the brain works and how to control seizures a lot better. We're not quite there yet, but we will be really soon. So I think 
I'd be really optimistic. I think really good things are ahead. And I think all of this technology will help us as well develop better medications. It'll have lots and lots of exciting returns for us. So I'd be really hopeful and optimistic. I think, you know, compared to when I studied epilepsy, it's just a completely different world.